ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فان استقى الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدث وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنه reported from the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that whilst three men were walking rain started to fall upon them so they sought shelter within a cave when they sought shelter within this cave a boulder fell upon its mouth trapping them inside so they said to one another let us call upon Allah while mentioning the best of the deeds that which we did or some good deeds that we did so that Allah may relieve us from this distress the first one he called out to Allah and he said ya Allah i had two elderly parents and a child and a wife and i used to go out to look after my flocks and my cattle then when i would come back in the evening at isha time i would give i would milk my animals and i would give my family to drink one day i went out looking for fodder and i came back very late and i found my parents already asleep so i went and brought milk from my milk animals and i held the vessel in front of the head of my parents and i hated to wake them up so i just stood there whilst i stood there waiting to give them first before my family this milk my child was crying at my feet and i remained like this until fajr he said ya allah if you know that i truly did this for your sake then relieve us so that we may see the sky so allah answered the dua and the boulder shifted so they could see the sky the second person he said ya allah indeed i loved my cousin more than any man can love a woman i was attracted to her more than any man can be attracted to a woman so i when i presented myself to her she refused unless i give her 100 coins so i worked very hard and i accumulated this wealth then when i presented this these coins to her she took it and when i was sat between her legs she said to me fear allah and do not deflower me without right fear allah and do not commit this crime whilst you are not married to me so i got up and i stood up and i left he said oh allah if i did this for your sake then relieve us from my distress for, from our distress so allah moved the boulder a bit more the third man he said ya allah oh allah indeed i hired and i employed a worker for a certain amount of grain or rice or cereal or millet and then he said to me after the work was done he asked me for his due so when i presented it to him he refused to take it and then i took what was due to him and i replanted it and from that i made much profit much more profit and i now bought cows and flocks with that profit he came back to me and he said fear allah and don't violate my rights so i said to him go to that cow and its flock and take it 
He said, fear Allah, are you mocking me? Because he wasn't due this cow and this flocks, he was due the grain that was originally due to him. He said, I'm not, for, I'm not mocking you, take your cattle, take that cow and go. And then he said, Ya Allah, if I did that for your sake, then relieve us of what remains. So Allah removed the boulder completely from the mouth of the cave and they were saved because of their truthfulness with Allah. In this hadith, there is a lesson for us in regards to Allah's loving that a deed be done truly for his sake, with sincerity, with ikhlas and sidq. Since each one of them mentioned a great deed, the first one he stood from Isha till Fajr with the vessel of milk in front or at the head of his parents and he didn't wake them whilst his child was crying at the feet. The second one was about to commit that which he was extremely attracted to and was so close but he stood up out of fear of Allah. The last one accumulated a large amount of wealth that he could have gotten away with and he just could have given that worker just the rice from the, from the beginning. But because of their truthfulness with Allah and they didn't just make the dua and mention the deed but at the end they said Ya Allah, if you know that then we were truthful, meaning if we were truthful, then relieve us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieve them. So if a deed is done, no matter how great it is, the struggles of seeking knowledge, the struggles of being a da'i, the struggle of going hajj and fasting and salah and qiyam al-layl, if it's not truly for the sake of Allah, then it is worthless. But if it is for the sake of Allah, then it is a great thing. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu he narrates from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions returned from Ghazwa to Tabuk, the expedition of Tabuk, it was a long journey, hard journey, in the heat of the sun, the scorching desert, they left out for this battle to face the Romans, even that though the Romans were nowhere to be seen when they, were, when they got to Tabuk. They went at the time when the Fruits were ready to be eaten and trade could have been done. They sacrificed and they went out for the sake of Allah. When they came back and when they came to Medina, the Prophet ﷺ said to the companions who went on this hard journey that there were people who remained behind in Medina, but actually they were with you on this journey. No part did you journey over, no valley did you cross, but they were with you. Meaning they were with you and they get a part of this reward. The companions radiallahu anhum said, radiallahu anhum, they went through this hard journey while they stayed in Medina. So they said, even though they stayed in Medina, the Prophet ﷺ said, yes, because they had a genuine excuse. So why did they get the reward? Because of the truthfulness inside their heart. When they said, we are going to support the religion of Allah and support the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and when they support the Messenger of Allah, they were truthful. Allah knew the truthfulness in their heart. But they had a genuine excuse. They couldn't go out. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave them a, still gave them a great reward. So ponder upon that. Abu Huraira radiallahu an, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Verily, Allah does not look at your appearance, nor does He look at your wealth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at your hearts and He looks at your actions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He looks at the hearts of the people alongside His actions. If his heart truly intends Allah, is truly standing upright for Allah, then their actions will also be worthy. But if the heart doesn't intend Allah, intends to show off, intends fame, intends popularity, intends good praise from the people, then their actions are of no benefit. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, be truthful in your Islam, your Iman and in your actions. أقول قول هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, Man kana yuridu al-hayata dunya wa zinataha. Allah says, whomsoever wants the dunya and its adornments and its decorations, 
If there is a person, he does the actions of the hereafter, like what? Like seeking knowledge and giving da'wah and salah and fasting and hajj. If he does these actions and is seeking by it the dunya, he wants fame, he wants popularity, he wants praise. What does Allah do? نُوَفِّ إِلَيْهِمْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ فِيهَا وَهُمْ فِيهَا لَا يُبْخَسُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually gives them what they wanted inside the dunya. You wanted to be famous. You wanted to be called Talib al-ilm. You wanted to be called a worshipper. You wanted to be called generous. You didn't intend Allah. You entered the dunya. Allah gives it. He becomes famous. People call him those good things. But what else does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He says, But these are the people. When it counts the most, in the Akhirah, they have nothing except for the fire. وَحَبِطَ مَا صَنَعُوا فِيهَا وَبَاطِلٌ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And in the hereafter, the, the efforts are nothing now. It doesn't mean anything. You didn't want Allah. So now you get nothing but the fire and your efforts have been wasted. My brothers and sisters, the worst way you can live your life is as an actor, as a pretender, acting. Nothing about you is real. To the extent some people, they can be fake in their testimony. La ilaha illallah. Because they say with their lips that I testify there is no deity worthy of worshipping truth except Allah. But they never truly worship Allah. They have no salah. They have no khawf, no fear of Allah. They have no hope in Allah. They have no tawakkul upon Allah. This is fakery. There are those who say, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. I testify that the Messenger, Muhammad, is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yet they don't follow him in his lifestyle. They don't follow him in his sunnah. And they innovate inside the religion. Where's the Sidq? Where's the truthfulness in this statement? Rather, this is like acting. This is like pretending. So if you truthfully say that you believe in the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and what he brought, then follow his sunnah. Don't live life as an actor, as a liar. Lies to himself, lies to the people. Because my brothers and sisters in Islam, such a life will lead to that person hating himself. Because more than anyone, that person will know that he's a fake. And no one can live with themselves when they are fake. As for living life as a truthful one, truthful to Allah, then this is the best life. When you can reflect on your heart and your actions and your conditions, and you can truly say, Rabbana amanna, Ya Allah, I have truly believed. I'm truly striving. I'm truly doing these actions for your sake. Fa'ghfillana, so forgive us. Warhamna, so have mercy on us. Wa anta khayrul rahimin, and indeed you are the most merciful of those who have mercy. Then this is the best life. When you're true with Allah, there's nothing better than this. A rainy day, a sunny day, a stressful, hard day, an easy day. It doesn't matter when you're truthful with Allah. That's the best life that you can ever live. When you have true belief. You're true in your belief, you're true in your actions, you're true in your knowledge, you're true in your da'wah, you're true in your prayer, you're true in your worship. Then it doesn't matter. All of these days, the truthful person is on top. Because being truthful to Allah is more beloved to us while we're having stressful days than to be a fake liar and have easy, easy days. And we ask Allah for truthfulness and for safety. And what is more, is the situation of the Akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, قَالَ Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will declare at that time, هَذَا يَوْمُ يَنْفَعُ الصَّادِقِينَ صِدْقُهُمْ That on that day, the truthful people who are really doing it for the sake of Allah, who really stood up for the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Allah knew, Allah will reward them and they will get the benefits of their truthfulness on that day. What would they get? لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ They will have gardens beneath which rivers flow. It's not the gardens of Europe, not the gardens of Asia, not the gardens of the Middle East. We're talking about the gardens of Jannah. Everything about them is better. When you go out and step out into a garden and a beautiful breeze passes you by and you smell that freshness, even that 
is better in Jannah. That breeze and the smell of the soil, everything about it is better. And they remain in there forever. And what is better than that? رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوعًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with these people and they are pleased with Allah. They were truthful with Allah and they found Allah's promise to be true. ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ And that is the great attainment. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, it is upon us to take ourselves to account and see how truthful we are towards Allah and make ourselves from the truthful. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم حرر فلسطين والمسجد الأقصى من كيد المعتدين وكن يا الله عونا لإخواننا في فلسطين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين